Hello, good morning, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's 8 o'clock on Thursday the 3rd of October. I'm reading Common Worship Daily Prayer from the Church of England. You'll find the words at the Church of England's website, at Aremus Daily Prayer, downloadable as app for Apple or Android device, or in the book Common Worship Daily Prayer in the Morning and Evening Prayer during Ordinary Times section. You're welcome to join me in the building, 8 and 6, Tuesday to Saturday, for Morning and Evening Prayer. Do you get in touch if you're coming any distance, just in case I'm doing something else on that particular occasion. Same times by Zoom. Zoom codes are on the Blythe Church's website and Facebook page, live stream on Facebook. And uh, you may join by Zoom, codes at uh, uh, same place, website and Facebook. And the audio will be on my Dominic Doble YouTube channel. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. A song of God's blessing, Psalm 67. God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. <clears throat> o let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. <clears throat> God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. <clears throat> As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, send me the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. We now turn to the Psalms, which you will find at the back of the book, those appointed this morning, are Numbers 90 and 92. Psalms 90 and 92. O Lord, my God, in you I, have, in you I take refuge. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the earth and the world were formed, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, Turn back, O children of earth, for a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday, which passes like a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream, they fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes, in the evening it is dried up and withered. For we can seem away in your displeasure, we are afraid of your wrathful indignation. You have set our misdeeds before you, and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone, and our years come to an end like a sigh. The days of our life are threescore years and ten, or if our strength endures, even fourscore. Yet the sum of them is but labour and sorrow, for they soon pass away, and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath and your indignation like those who fear you? So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Turn again, O Lord, how long will you delay? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us with your loving kindness in the morning, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Give us gladness for the days you have afflicted us and for the years in which we have seen adversity. Show your servants your works and let your glory be over their children. And may the gracious favour of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper our handiwork, O prosper the work of our hands. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. O Lord my God, in you I take refuge. You, O Lord, shall be exalted forevermore. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord, and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to tell of your love early in the morning, and your faithfulness in the night's time. 
upon the ten-stringed instrument, upon the harp, and to the melody of the lyre. For you, Lord, have made my, me glad by your acts, and I sing aloud at the work of your hands. <clears throat> o Lord, how glorious are your works! Your thoughts are very deep. The senseless do not know, nor do fools understand, that though the wicked sprout like grass, and all the workers of iniquity flourish, it is only be to be destroyed for ever, but you, O Lord, shall be exalted for evermore. For lo, your enemies, O Lord, lo, your enemies shall perish, and all the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn you have exalted like the horns of wild oxen. I am anointed with fresh oil. My eyes will look down on my foes. My ears shall hear the ruin of the evildoers who rise up against me. <clears throat> the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree and shall spread abroad like a cedar of Lebanon. Such as are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be vigorous and in full leaf. That they may show that the Lord is true he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You, O Lord, shall be exalted forevermore. So we scroll past our first reading, if we're following electronically, if we're following the book, turn back to morning prayer on Thursday from the Psalter at the back of the book to find the canticle, A Song of the Covenant. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God, who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwell in it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. I have called you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. <clears throat> Second Kings 9 from 17 may be found online immediately before the canticle we've just read. In a Holy Bible, Kings is in the history section after the law at the beginning of your Hebrew Bible. Both covenants there, the first two thirds is Hebrew Bible. Open the Bible a quarter of the way in, you should find first, second Samuel, first, second Kings, first, second Chronicles. We're looking for second Kings. <clears throat> and in Second Kings chapter 9, large Arabic margin, chapter 9. And we're reading from verses 17, the verses are the small numbers in the text, of course. In Jezreel, the sentinel standing on the tower spied the company of Jehu arriving and said, I see a company. Joram said, take a horseman, send him to meet him and say, is it in peace? So the horseman went to meet him and said, thus says the king, is it in peace? Jehu reported, what have you to do with peace? Fall in behind me, the sentinel reported, saying the messenger reached them, but he's not coming back. Then he sent out a second horseman who came to them and said, thus says the king, is it peace? Jehu answered, what have you to do with peace? Fall in behind me. Again, the sentinel reported he reached, but he's not coming back. It looks like the driving of Jehu, son of Nimshi, for he drives like a maniac. Joram said, get ready, and they got his chariot ready. Then King Joram of Israel and King Ahaziah of Judah set out, each in his chariot, and went to meet Jehu. They met him in the property of Naboth, the Jezreelite. When Joram said, Jehu, he said, is it peace, Jehu? He answered, what peace can there be, so long as the many whoredoms and sorcerers of your mother Jezebel continue? <clears throat> and then Joram reigned about and fled, saying to Ahaziah, Treason, Ahaziah, Jehu drew his bow with all its strength and shot Joram between the shoulders, so that the arrow pierced his heart, and he sank in his chariot. Jehu said to his aide, Bidkar, lift him out and throw him on the plot of ground belonging to Naboth the Jezreelite, for remember when you and I rode side by side behind his father Ahab, how the Lord uttered this oracle against you for the blood of Naboth and for the blood of his children that I saw yesterday, says the Lord. I swear I will repay you on this very plot of ground. Now therefore lift him out and throw him on the plot of ground in accordance with the word of the Lord. <coughs> when King Ahaziah of Judah saw this, he fled in the direction of Beth Hagan. Jehu pursued him, <coughs> saying, shoot him also. And they shot him in the chariot at the descent of Ger, which is by Ibelaim. Then he fled to Megiddo and died there. His officers carried him in a chariot to Jerusalem, buried him in his tomb and his ancestors in the city of David. 
In the eleventh year of Joram, son of Ahab, Ahaziah began to reign over Judah. When Jehu came to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it. She painted her eyes and adorned her head, looked out the window. As Jehu entered the gate, she said, Is it peace, a similarly murderer of your master? He looked up to the window and said, Who is on my side? Two or three eunuchs looked at him, and he said, Throw her down, so they threw her down. Some of her blood spattered on the wall and on the horses, which trampled on her. Then he went in and ate and drank, and he said, See to that cursed woman and bury her, for she is a king's daughter. But when they went, want, went to bury her... <clears throat> they found no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. And they came back and told him, he said, This is the words of the Lord which he spoke by his servant Elijah the Tishbite. In the territory of Jezreel, the dogs shall eat the flesh of Jezebel. The corpse of Jezebel shall be like dung in the field in the territory of Jezreel, that no one can say this is Jezebel. So, pretty grim readings, I'm afraid, for a Thursday morning. <clears throat> Maybe the uh, second reading will improve matters. <clears throat> but. Um, Basically, we've got a fulfilment of prophecy. We've got um, a king being shot in an arrow and dying on a plot of land um, where a previous prophecy had said he would die. Um, <coughs> and uh, his wife <coughs> um, being thrown out of a window to her death and he eaten by dogs. Um, as it said, um, dogs will eat them, eat you. <coughs> and... Um, what I guess we need to know is where well, we've got to this point, and the story was that, is that, um, they basically weren't um, godly as far as the writers of the Hebrew Scriptures would have it. Um, they killed prophets, <coughs> um, and uh, didn't do as they were told, they worshipped foreign gods. And so this is, although it's a gruesome story, its message is for those of us who have authority, we may not all be sovereigns, <coughs> but we all have authority, whether it's just over the day ahead as we plan it, those things that we decide we do, do, won't do. We might have staff, we might have parents, we might have children, animals for whom we have responsibility. We have responsibility for what we buy, where we invest. So we all have leadership, and if we use that in a godly fashion, then all will be well. And uh, if we don't, then our end will be ignominious, potentially painful, uh, and uh, potentially sudden but um, notorious. And so that's, I guess, the lesson. And whether we think of that as being uh, our actual physical life or our life in that job or role, uh, I, I would say that we can use that as a metaphor, <clears throat> however we wish to apply it. And those are the kings, I guess, should take it to heart, or queens. Acts 27 from 27 <clears throat> is our next reading. We scroll on to that if we're following online. In the Holy Bible, Acts comes after the Gospels. The Gospels open the last third of the Scriptures, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Um, after which we'll find the book of Acts, within which large number 27 in the margin, chapter 27, and the small numbers in the text. And we're again reading from verse 27, so easy to, remember, easy to remember, chapter 27, verse 27 in the book of Acts. When the fourteenth night had come, as we were drifting across the Sea of Ad Adria, about midnight the sailors suspected that they were nearing land, so they took soundings and found twenty fathoms. A little farther on they took soundings again and found fifteen fathoms, fearing that we might run on the rocks, they let down four anchors from the stern <coughs> and prayed for day to come. But when the sailors tried to escape from the ship and had lowered the boat into the sea on the pretext of putting out anchors from the bow, Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, unless these men stay in the ship you cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut away the ropes of the boat and set it to drift. Just before daybreak, Paul urged all of them to take some food, saying, Today is the 14th day that you have been in suspense and remaining without food. <clears throat> Having eaten nothing, therefore I urge you to take some food, for it will help you survive. For none of you will lose a hair from your heads. After he had said this, he took bread and giving thanks to God. The presence of all he broke and he began to eat. Then all of them were encouraged and took food for themselves. We were in all 276 persons in the ship. <clears throat> After they had satisfied their hunger, they lightened the ship by throwing the wheat into the sea. In the morning they did not recognise the land, but they noticed a bay with a beach on which they planned to run the ship ashore if they could, so they cast off the anchors and let them in the, left them in the sea. At the same time they loosened the ropes that tied the steering oars, then hoisting the foresail to the wind, they made to the beach. But striking a reef, they ran aground, ran the ship aground, the bow stuck and remained immovable, but the stern was being broken up by the force of the waves. The soldiers' plan was to kill the prisoners so that none might swim away and escape, but the centurion, wishing to save Paul, kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could swim to jump aboard first and make for the land, the rest to follow, some on planks, others on pieces of the ship. And so it was that all were brought safely to land. <coughs> so this is just a part of the story of Paul getting to Rome. And uh, <coughs> as we look back on our lives, we might 
and we recognised that they were chapters for us when our relationship broke down, when we had that car accident. Um, whatever it might be, loss of work. There was a circumstance, situation, circumstance situation which we saw growing and developing. And uh, we might be God-fearing people amongst uh, people with no faith or with different faith. And uh, some of what happened to us might have happened to them too. Covid, for example, um, the invasion in Lebanon by Israel. Um, we are affected by others. And uh, those of us who have faith may either actually um, break bread, have Holy Communion as that um, prayer that brings God to us and us to God in person, in the flesh, somehow, miraculously. And that prayer is powerful. We might otherwise simply pray, we might otherwise simply offer food, support, encouragement, which is what the Mass stands for, but we just might do it, as Paul does here, in the middle of this um, potentially chaotic section, where we've got like a sandwich with the two lumps of bread, um, talking about the um, getting to a point where they have this meal and then getting to a point where they get to safety. Perhaps in the original, it um, matches more obviously. Um, uh, what's the word? But at any rate, um, yes, we've got those, these three paragraphs, the one in the middle. So we've got the situation getting worse. We've got Paul then expressing his faith, and then the situation gets worse before it gets better. But he is quite right. Um, they all are brought safely to land. And so that might be our role in the military, in, in the NHS, in our business, as perhaps a big customer as order fails or they go into liquidation, and then we're left with a big risk against our income for the year ahead. People with faith, ours or other, people with belief, um, can encourage and speak. And if that is us today, if that is you today, may God bless you, that uh, God may use you to carry uh, not only the hopes, but actually the aspirations and the hopes uh, and dreams, but the actuality of the situation to safety at the last. Let us pray that we don't fear in the face of adversity. Fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name, you are mine. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. The song of Zechariah, the promise to God to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, Born of the house of servant David, through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, to remember our holy covenant, <coughs> your holy covenant. <coughs> his. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We promised, O God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. Make a lover, keeper, three in one, one in three. We thank you for bringing us to the beginning of this day. And um, whilst our first reading was pretty bleak, I guess it can serve as a warning for us that if we live right, then that won't be our end. But the second was more encouraging. The prisoners, the soldiers, the sailors, <coughs> the centurion, were all inspired and cared for by this priest, this apostle, who spoke of hope and broke bread in their presence. And whilst their world fall apart, they themselves ended up on that eternal shore in safety. We pray that that would be our ability, our calling, our experience with those we pray for, with those we live amongst. World Council Churches prayers for Colombia, Ecuador, Venezuela. 
we thank for the resistance of part to past colonization and to practices of today that prioritize economic ideologies over the needs of the people. We pray for greater respect for the human rights of all, especially vulnerable populations and those who work for the well-being of others and of the environment. We lift to God everyone involved in supporting older people who require extra health support, social care and other services. We pray that central and local government will be able to provide sufficient financial and human resources to meet this growing need across society. And if we do pray that, if we do believe it as a community, we will ask to be taxed more, we will ask for our rates to go up. I had a question that came to us from our local authority yesterday, which we said yes please to. Um, increment three or five pounds, was it a week or a month? Month perhaps, I don't know, can't remember. <coughs> but um, relatively minor, and if you multiply that by the number of people who give, we would be able to provide much better services. Uh, I think it's a better conversation to be asking, can we raise support for um, public funded organisations rather than the um, discussion, the message that we've had for the last 10, 40 years has been got to cut it. So if that is the case, if we have turned the corner, we are looking to increase public services, then that will help us all as we grow older. And indeed now as we're looking for doctors and schools and dentists and hospitals and buses and roads without potholes, and can you say what else? Libraries, art, venues. <coughs> From Green Christian, researchers at Berkeley National Labs, have, or Berkeley maybe it is in America, um, have determined that oil, oil, coal and gas have a major role to play in America's energy company, writes Andy Corbley. I don't know quite what that means I'm trying to read to summarize but apparently there's lots of red tape preventing renewables getting anywhere but these power supplies are already producing so somehow or other renewables might be able to use oil gas and coal to supply power not quite sure how that works anyway um, whoever understands all that um, if it enables renewable to be become part of the offer and in America for people at a uh, large scale. Obviously we can put solar and uh, wind on our houses or in our communities if we organise ourselves to do it. <clears throat> but that looks like they're looking at major schemes, which I'm not hugely in agreement with because they tend to be supported by Chinese and other capital. Uh, but there we are. Um, moves towards renewable in general, I guess a good thing, but especially small scale local accountable, best of all. The Anglican Communion has five marks of mission, the fifth of which is our engagement with uh, the environment. Pope Francis' prayer, which I've serialised throughout the week, includes the lines touch the hearts of those who look only for gain at the expense of the poor and the earth. The benefit cycle on Thursday, you pray for our farmers, give thanks to God for the extraordinary, yeah, is it extraordinary? Yeah, yeah, I suppose. Um, exemplary con uh, conference we had over last weekend. Food and farming, environment, regenerative, etc., talking about uh, local co-ops to grow and sell local co uh, food and uh, local co-ops to create and sell energy. <clears throat> really great ideas, looking at the care and health of the ground, care and health of stock and uh, plants, crops. Really inspiring, high-powered, nationally significant people, including our MP. So uh, thank God for Rachel and others who are behind that, our own uh, Alice and uh, Ginny. And uh, we pray that there will be positive outcomes that the church might support um, in and across this corner of Suffolk. We pray for our farmers who are struggling with the rain. And uh, we pray that our new government will get to grips with uh, healthy land, healthy farming, healthy food, healthy population. <coughs> Should be quite straightforward. We thank you for those people um, amongst our small and uh, struggling committees who keep our churches ticking over. <clears throat> we pray that you draw people to join at uh, Chedston Wissett Specs or Linster, but we thank you for Joe the Church Warden St Mary, Chedston for Geoffrey Warden St Mary Wissett, for Keith at Speed Specs, Malcolm St Margaret Linster, thank you Malcolm who's already shared his secretary role to Cecilia, 
pray you draw um, one or two others in to uh, support with some of those other roles um, that they might learn from him before he decides he's going to step down. We pray for a um, secretary and another warden at uh, Spexel, uh, warden and treasurer at Wissett, and a warden at Chedston, and two or three other people for each of those committees who are full of beans and active. We've got one or two in some of those committees that are reasonably large uh, compared to some of that others, but those on those committees are not uh, prepared to take on any officer roles. They are doing other things in the parish, of course, and there are other people in the parish who aren't on committee rules. They're doing stuff, which is brilliant. But uh, we really need to have two wardens, a treasurer and a secretary in each one, and four other active people. So we thank you for these. Uh, we've got some names for role at Wissett. Um, I'll include Claire, also Henry, Edward, Eve, Nick, and David, Jennifer, Valerie. I think Valerie's died. God rest her soul. Diana, Susan, Susan Helen, Hugh, Richard, Kathleen, Thomas, Anne, and in Spexel, Fred, Betty, De Beryls, Caroline, Karen, Barbara, Malish, Lucy, Patricia, David, Janet, Miss Craig, Elizabeth, Burke, Francis, and in Linstead, Janet, Sheila, Angela, Irene, Sylvia, Margaret, Derek, Pauline, Hannah. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Upon your request, and a mother of whom you wish for a day, he had him a quarter of a year of motion, Sarah, who was washing some of motion, said he cut down as my father. Pend on your head, dear Macosher of a hobo, your Hushler, Karina, for a much my yash, my home was a caddy at my liver. Pend on your kitchen, your mother was my your Hushan Slack and your Bahaba and Macadianas, and more almost in your stiff and your Kalamazan. Pend on your Ashley, he have as my year of a homos, my other good material, but I will have a lot of my sister, and the force of my yash you. Fembagri <laughs> May God, the author of peace and love, of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you as perfect freedom, defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to us. Join us on Facebook. And YouTube.